Hi, in this video, we're going to see the Ethernet frame format. This frame has these fields that you can see in the image, and particularly you can see the preamble, two fields for the destination and source addresses, another field for the length and type, another for the data, and finally the cyclus redundancy check that you already know. So just before explaining each of them, we're going to see why one of them is length and type at the same time. So initially, in the very first version, we have the IEEE 802.3 version of the frame, and that field meant, meant the length of the frame without the preamble. Okay. Afterwards, this was extended, defining the Ethernet frame, and this was extended, and this field now represented also as well the type and we will see how this works. So let's start first with the preamble. The preamble is a number of bits just to synchronize the receivers and the sender's clock. Okay. In particular, uh, we have eight bytes. The first seven bytes have a specific pattern with one zero, one zero, and the last byte is almost the same, but with two ones at the end. So remember that in, at the end, in the link or in the cable, we have a signal, which is one and zeros, because we all only can have some of them. So to distinguish when the frame is arriving, we have this preamble, which is kind of a synchronization. Afterwards, we have two fields with six bytes each, the destination address and the source address. You have an example of one of these addresses here below and afterwards you can check one additional video that we are preparing in just in case you are curious how this address is defined. In a different video we will explain it. The third field is the length or type. So initially uh, we can say, see that this is the type, okay, so we can have several types and remember that this is the type of the upper layer, okay? So if this is the frame and layer two, we will have the type of the layer three, okay, of the upper layer. So what uh, protocols can we have there? We can have ones like IPv4, IPv6, you really know. Also ARP, ARP is used uh, at, it's, it's uh, somehow at level in between layer two and layer three because it checks uh, the hardware address for the routine address, okay, so for the IP address. And then we also have some very old types like these ones that you have here that they are no so much use, so uh, they are not so used anymore, okay. Finally, you have also some reserve values like this one for VLAN that you will see in the following weeks. So when this file, this field indicates the size, when we have a value smaller than this one in, in hexadecimal, which is 1536, uh, if the value is smaller than this, then we know that this doesn't represent the type, but it represents the length instead. Okay, this is just kept uh, for compatibility. Okay, just in case that we have frames with different formats and different versions, we get uh, we still keep uh, keep these values for the length. Okay, so any type should be higher than this value. As you can see here, all of them are higher than that value. Finally, uh, the fourth field is the data. Okay, the data from the upper layer, from the network layer. And this should have a size between 46 and 1,500 bytes. Okay, so what happens if we have uh, 46 bytes? The total frame size, remember that this is the size without the preamble, it would be 64 bytes. Uh, why do we have this minimum? Because if you remember for different to, to access the media we, we need to detect the collision somehow so if the frames are too too small maybe it's very difficult to check if there has been a collision okay particularly in the oldest networks okay so 64 bytes allow the frame so that it can be detected in in, in any ethernet ethernet network okay uh, this is somehow maintained for, compa for compatibility, although collisions rarely happen nowadays. 
Okay, we will see why with the switches and so on in another, in another video. So you may be wondering what happens if we have fewer than 46 bytes? What do we do in these situations? Okay, so if we have fewer than that amount of bytes, then we can just fill it with random values. Okay, we just fill the data until it has at least 46 bytes. This uh, random addition, okay, is called padding and it uh, allows that we have this minimum frame size. Uh, how do we know the actual size? Because if we are filling it with random values, how do we know what is the actual size of the data that we are sending? Uh, it depends on the protocol that we have in the upper layer. Okay, so for example, in ARP, we have always a fixed size of 28 bytes. So if the type says that we have ARP, it is very, very easy. We know that the data is 24 bytes. In the case that it is not, it, it is not fixed, like for example in IPv4, uh, we will have some kind of field in the upper layer that indicates the tetragram length. So for example, if it's IPv4, uh, we would take the data and inside the data, we know that we have a header from layer three, from the upper layer. And in that header, we have a specific field with the length. Okay. So once we analyze the data, we know that we have such amount of padding. Okay. Finally, we have the CRC. Okay. As you know, this is for detecting errors. Okay. For error control. So as you know, this, uh, this is four bytes. And as you know, uh, in this CRC, we need a generator pattern that has one bit more than the code. Okay. So as, as it is four bytes, we have 32 uh, bits and the generator pattern just out of QGCT is 33 bits. And it is shown below. Okay. Just in case you are curious. And that's all. So thank you.